It's because the Word of God is living and active and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, able to discern between them. Bones and marrow, the intents of the heart. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. You see, if somebody dies without Christ, they really have no hope. But we're, we're not. If we're in Christ, we're not of those that have no hope. Amen. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Christ, say in Christ, in Jesus, Christ. will God bring with him. In other words, Jesus is coming back. Now, all those who have died in Christ, say in Christ. In Christ. That's located in Christ. That's a location. I had, I had a pastor one time tell me, he's, he was like a once saved, always saved guy. He said, well, he said, Pastor Mike, who do you think will be raptured in the rapture? I said, everybody who is in Christ. Now, the truth is, he thought once you get in Christ, you can never leave Christ. That's not true. Jesus said, abide in me, stay in me, stay located in me. In 1 John, he says, how do we know if we're staying in him, staying in Christ, we're abiding in Christ? He said, if we keep his commandments. Jesus said, if you really love me, you'll keep my commandments. So that's how we know we're staying in Christ, if we're keeping his commandments. And what I think was Peter said, his commandments are not grievous, they're not too hard to keep. You see, Jesus came and was tempted in all ways, even as we are, yet without sin. And he did it so he could help us be who he'd have us to be. So he can be formed in us. We should all be walking around like little Jesuses. Doing the works that Jesus did. He said those who believe in me. The same works that I do. Shall they do also. For we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. Shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the trump of God. And the dead in Christ, this word in, it's a Greek word that denotes a location. Those who are in Christ shall rise first. That's right. Then we which were alive and remain shall be caught up. That's what, that's what rapture means. Caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Notice that should be a comfort to us. Yes. That we're going to be, that our loved ones that are in Christ, they're, going, they're already in heaven with Christ. And when he comes back, he's bringing them with him. Yes. And their, their bodies are going to get resurrected. Glory. Their spirit yes. and soul will be united to their body. Glory they'll become an immortal body. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Even the ones that are that the fish have ate in the sea. <laughs> you know, people get buried in the sea and the fish eat their bodies. It's all going to be reanimated. How can God do that? The same way he created everything. Yes. Amen. He spoke it and yes. it happened. Come on. In one day, he yes. created everything. That's right. In the beginning, God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Yes. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. Yes, thank it took him you, six whole days. Whoa. He spread it out six whole days. To create everything in the universe. Amen. <laughs> thank you, Lord. He's Almighty God. He could have just done it in an instant. Great and mighty. Yes. He spread it out to six whole days. On purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Because he wanted to tell us or tell us the end from the beginning. That's right. Yeah. Because it'll be six thousand years until and the Bible says the Bible says that you know, I think it's in Peter that God's gonna make a short time. It's in Romans, God's gonna make a short time of the earth. Yes. A short time. And six thousand years with God, that's a short time. Now consider this before the flood, people lived to be almost a thousand years old. People lived to be almost a thousand years old. But God found out that they became evil when they did that. There's coming a time where people are going when to, the, when the, after the tribulation period, which is the seven year period, the wrath of God period is three and a half years. But, but after that time, we're going to we're a rule and reign with Christ in the earth. Because heaven, which is the new Jerusalem, is coming, at the end of that, it's coming down here on the earth. We're going to rule and reign with him on the earth. Glory. For that. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then lifespans are going to go back to where they were before the flood. Most people are going to 
Bible says that they'll be 100 years old, but they'll be like a child mm -hmm. when they're 100 years old. That's pretty wild, isn't it? Yes. I believe it's all true. Yes. I believe it's all true. Thank you, Lord. Somebody asked me what if I believe something in the Bible is true. I said everything in the Bible is true. It's all true. So if it's in the Bible, I believe it. He said, you believe it's, that we're going to reap what we sow. Whatsoever man soweth, those so shall he reap. It's what the word says. Amen. You're not going to plant an orange tree and get apples. <laughs> you reap what you sow. Thank you, Father. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Start with verse 50. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Now this sleep means die. We shall not all die. But we shall be changed. Yes. Those who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord yes. will be changed. Thank you, Lord. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound and the dead shall rise incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Glory. We'll be changed in a moment. It's true. In the twinkling of an eye. It's true. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. The dead shall be raised. Da, 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 da. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. <laughs> you don't know all the words don't start, right? <laughs> That's right. For this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall be have put on incorruption... And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the same that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know not, as you know that out your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. In other words, we need to just be walking with God all the time. Yes. All the time. Every day. All the time. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Turn to Matthew chapter 24. Now, the Lord showed me a long time ago that Matthew chapter 24 was like a key to end time stuff. It was like, because it's kind of like in chronological order. So we're going to go through some of that. Matthew chapter 24, we're going to start with verse 3. <clears throat> and as he, sat, he, Jesus, sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? That's the world is age, the end of the age. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So God's concerned about people deceiving us. You know, Satan deceived Eve, and now there's people that try to deceive us. If we get rooted and grounded in the Word of God, it will be hard for us to be deceived. That's right. If we'll be walking in the Spirit, it will be hard for us to be deceived. That no man deceive. For many, say many, many. shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, See that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Now, what end is he talking about? The end of the age. You see, there's different ages. This age is talking about the church age. Okay? You shall hear more. We're still in the church age now. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in divers, divers places. It means all different kinds of places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall deliver they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and shall hate, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The Bible says in the end times, people will hate those who are who are doing good. We're living in that time right now. Right. Yes. Yep. You're right. If you're a Christian living a holy life, people are going to hate you for that. Yep. Why? Because they feel guilty. Just your presence, they hate you for that. Because you're living a holy life. You see, that's kind of what made that guy mad last night when I told him, I don't do that kind of stuff. Because he said, well, it may not be right, but I think it's good. I said, well, I don't think it's good. So, 
I didn't, I didn't fight with him or argue with him, but, but, you know, I didn't agree with him. Right. So I don't do it because I didn't think it's right. And then, because of these people coming against him, then, then many shall be offended. Now, this Greek, the, then there's a Greek word kahi. It's spelled K-A-I. It's pronounced kahi. And it links thoughts or things together into one. And then it's going into these, these things right here. It's going into the kahi word in the ants. And so many shall be offended. That's why I'm, I'm, I think we should not be taking offense on anything. Right. Because it leads to other things that are not good. That's right. So don't take offense. We well, don't know what he did to me. Don't take offense. Right. And we have the choice to take an offense or not. That's right. I mean, offenses yeah. come. We don't have to take them. Right. Yep. He said, many, because of these things, because people don't like you, many will be offended. And because of the offense, they should betray one another. You see, people get offended, they leave the church. People get offended, and they, they, they eventually, the offense turns into hate. I'm telling you. That's right. Do not let offense destroy your life. It's like when you pull, take an offense, it's like un, being in unforgiveness, okay? It's like Tom, if he did something bad, now he's not dead every day, he's bad to him. But if Tom, Tom, Tom did something bad to me, it's like I think, I'm not going to forgive him for that. Because he, he had never asked me to forgive him. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, you. He just made. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, this is what what would be like if I took a Poor Tom. See, I'm not making. I'm not. It's not hurt him for me not to forgive him. It's like a poison. It's like me drinking a poison, thinking it's going to hurt him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's killing me because now I can't receive from God. Right. Doesn't make unforgiveness. Yes. Paul says, "Faith worketh by love." So if we're not walking in love, our faith won't work. When we're praying the prayer of faith, the Bible says in Matt, Mark eleven twenty five, it says, "Examine yourself. If you have ought against any, examine yourself, and and forgive them, so that God can forgive you. Because if you don't forgive them, God can't forgive you." The next verse says that. So we need to be walking in love because faith works by love forgives people. The Bible says, "Be kind one to another, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us." When God forgave us, he remembers our sins no more. So when we forgive others, we have to let it go. That's right. We don't have to. If you want joy, you want peace, if you want results in your prayer life, you have to. Amen. We have to. We want results. How many wants results when you pray? Yes. How many wants, when you get into sin, how many wants God to be able to forgive you? Yes. All of us, right? Yes. We all need that sometimes. Lord. There's times where I miss it. I mean, I don't do it on purpose, but there's times where I miss something. And I say, man, I shouldn't have done that, Lord. Forgive me. Then he does. Right. Come on. Yeah. He don't remember it anymore. Right. That's a good thing. Yeah, he doesn't remember it anymore. He don't remember it anymore, but the devil tried to pull it back to you. Yeah. He's the accuser of the brethren. Oh, yeah. Day and night. So we need to be walking in God's ways. We need to be set our eyes on the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, I read uh, the book, <clears throat> the book uh, that John Bevere wrote on the bait of Satan. He talks about this offense. He links all these together. <clears throat> so I looked him up in the Greek. I said, I bet that's that Greek word, kei, in between all those. And it was. So it is all linked together. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. <clears throat> you see, when people take offense, and they're in unforgiveness. Because offense, it's like, that guy did something that I don't like. And, I'm, and I, I don't like that. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm going away from that guy. And then they, be, they develop hate towards him. Now, hatred is a terrible thing. Because it says in 1 John, it says, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in this. Right. Right. You see, you don't have to, have, it's like under the new covenant, it's actually a stricter way. Jesus says, much given, much required. So now under, and with Christ being in us, now we have more higher responsibility. Jesus himself said, 
Under the old covenant, you had to actually commit the act of adultery. But now, if you lust in your heart to have a woman, and lust is a strong word. It's like, if I could have her, I would. I'm going to go after to have her. And that's lust. It's not just, well, she sure looks nice. That's not lust. It's like, I'm going after her. I'm going to try to get her. That's lust. He said, if you lust in your heart for a woman, he said, you've committed adultery with her under the new covenant already. James, John said, in 1 John, he said, if you hate your brother, you're a murderer already. And we know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. No murderer. That's okay? right. So, so this is a dangerous place to get because you, you get where you get into hatred towards people. And because of that, and then many false prophets shall arise and they shall deceive many. Who are these many that they're deceiving? These many who have taken offense. They've gotten into hatred. They've run away from people. And that now they're just being deceived by false teachers. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. In other words, you were in agape, and all of a sudden you took offense, then you, then you separated yourself from people, then you got into hatred, then you got deceived by false teachers, and then because your iniquity abounded, you, your, the, your love is wax cold, your agape is like the love of God that was in your heart is wax cold. That's a bad place to be. Yes. Jesus. You're lost then. Your agape is gone. It's wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. The same shall be delivered. We can be delivered. Amen. We need to walk in love. We need to forgive one another. We need to hold fast till the end. I say, how long do I hold on? Well, as long as you have breath, hold on. Amen. Amen. As long as you have, and then, then after you don't have breath, then you can go on to be with the Lord. Yes. Okay? As long as you're walking in Christ, living in Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Then verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then, then, then shall the end come. The end of what? The end of the age. Come. That's the rapture. That's the catching away of the saints. Thank you, Lord. This gospel right now, where the first generation, since Jesus said that, where the gospel is being preached right now as a witness unto all nations. Right now. That's right. Right now. We're in the first generation that's happened since Jesus said this over 2,000 years ago. So we're, the rapture is about to take place. Yes. He said, then shall the end come, the end of the age. I'm going up. And I'm, going I'm going up. Amen. I'm going up in the first resurrection. Glory. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up in the first resurrection. I'm going up. I'm going up, I'm going up with my Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. Now one more portion of scripture. Turn me to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Thank you, Father. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. It's right after 1 Timothy. <laughs> this know also that in the last days, say last days. Perilous times shall come. Now I have people, I have a lot of ministers saying, oh, right before Christ comes back, there's going to be this great revival and everything's going to get great. Listen, things aren't getting better and better. Things are getting worse. That's right. It says in the last days, things are going to get worse. I had another man, pastor, he had taught that. And he came to me and talked to me about it. He said, do you think that everything's going to get better? I said, no. So the Bible says everything's going to get worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse until Jesus comes back. Jesus himself said, when I return, will I find faith in the earth? He was concerned that he wouldn't find faith in the earth when he returned. When the Son of Man returns, will he find faith in the earth? So, in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. This kind of describes our time right now. Sure. Men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, Unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That's talking about like homosexuality. You can't hardly turn TV on now without them lifting up homosexuality. Any show, they have nasty stuff of 
men and women together. Men and women, and women and women. Almost every show has that kind of stuff in it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like when years ago, there's a there's El, this Ellen gal that's a that's a lesbian that's on that's on a show. On years ago, she tried a show, but she failed. But now she's praised her show. Is. Now she's lifted up. See, now, now it used to be it used to be illegal to be a homosexual. Now it's not only legal, but now it's praised. It's a lifted up. Now they promote people that's in that stuff. Mm -hmm. God says it's an abomination. Yes. Okay? Right. Without natural affection, truth breakers, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good. So people's going to hate you. I was in the airport one day. It's been a few months back, and I had my I had my church sign on my car, which I found out after that was really right to have that. So I had my church sign on my car, and it said, "Preaching the uncompromised word of God." So this guy in the in the this other driver in the in the parking lot, he said, "What does that mean, <laughs> preaching the uncompromised word?" I said, "That means we believe the whole Bible. We preach without compromise." And he said, "You mean you believe that God created everything in six days?" I said, we absolutely believe that. He said, well, you're an idiot. Right. And so he, he went in after me, man. Made him mad. I mean, he, he got mad at me, and I, I didn't fight back with him. I just said, we believe the Bible, and God's word's true. And, and then he, he just cursed me and all kinds of things. And he, he said, there is no God. And he just goes on and on, finally. And finally, he said, and finally, he, he said, well, God has killed all these people. That's what he said. I said, I thought you didn't believe in God. He said, that's right. There is no God. <laughs> but he's getting madder and madder and madder. I mean, I'm like, just, okay. And finally, it was in the, I mean, it was hot. It was hot outside. It was in the middle of the, it was this last summer. It was hot. And finally, he got so mad, he rolled his window up, and he's sitting there in his car baking. And he scooted down in his seat. I thought, well, that's kind of stupid. Because, so, and then he drove off and he had on his bumper sticker he had a, like a, you know, a, fish, a Christian fish when it sat in the middle of a Darwin that had little legs on it on the fish so he was religious his, his religion was Darwinism so but see that he hated me I don't even know the guy he was mad at me because I believed in God and I believed the Bible was true and he believes that, that we all came from a rock he believes billions of years ago that nothing exploded. And finally, all these things formed by evolution. And then the, the earth had ro hot rocks on it and stuff. And it rained on these hot rocks. And life somehow sprung, loop, sprung up. And so we evolved from all these things that sprung up from rocks. So we're just, our descendants are rocks, according to evolution. So... Now that takes more faith than to believe that God spoke everything during existence. That's, I mean, that's some big time faith. But they, they figured out it would take long. So they used to say like the earth was like a billion years old. and They went to like 6 billion. Now they're like 13.5 billion years. Because they figured out it's going to take a long time for that. All that had to happen. Of course, there's no way to prove it. God's word is truth. Yes. Amen. You see, God created the reason that people are different is because God created us in His own image. The reason we can think and we can speak and we can think and we can be who God has us be is because God created us different yes, than the animals. Right. Yeah. He, he set us as to rule and reign over the animals of the earth. God created us like this. There wasn't a pre-Adamic race. About 6,000 years ago, God created everything. He made Adam and Eve, and everything proceeded from Adam and Eve. Every person is related in the whole world. Yeah. Every person, every race is related. They all sprang from Adam and Eve and Noah and his family. Right. Start with Adam and Eve and then Noah and his family. God put the DNA in them to make every race. <laughs> it's amazing. So we're all related. Just love everybody. Amen. It doesn't matter what color their skin is, they we're right. all made in the image of, yes. of God. Yes, yes. We're not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Right. If somebody's a Christian, we should. There's nothing, no problem with that. Hallelujah. Glory. That's my message. Right. 
Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust him at his word. <laughs> you about to know the rest of the words, man. Hallelujah. God is good. Start another one. Start another one. Start another one, John. <laughs>